G'day, welcome back to the channel. My name is Matt, but you will know me as WFX Malice. Today, I'm gonna to be playing around on a 3D printer, bringing you another Fusion 360 tutorial. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to use the revolve function. Let's get started. Before we get started, I've got a funny story for you. Before I do any recording, I like to get myself ready. So I have a shower, put on some fresh clothes, brush my teeth, brush my hair. Well, today I reach over, grab the toothbrush out of the toothbrush holder, open up the drawer, get the toothpaste out, put the toothpaste on the brush, go to brush my teeth and <laughs> extra strength muscle relaxation heat gel. Pays to read the label. Anyway, back to it. My wife recently picked up a pie maker from the supermarket. It was cheap. It's one of these ones that make little 10 centimeter pies. The problem is it didn't have a pastry cutter with it and you've got to cut two different size circles out of pastry, one for the lid and one for the base. She asked me, can I make her something that's going to do the job? Yeah, no worries. Realistically, all she needs is two different size biscuit cutters or Play-Doh cutters if you're a big kid at heart. I thought, well, why does she need both? There's no Elder Paso kid here. Why can't she just have one? I jumped online and did a little bit of research. Other pie makers do come with a pastry cutter and they do sort of like what I was thinking, just two different size cookie cutters facing opposing directions. It's the way they join them that I think really messes up their design. What they do is they go and put a little 90 degree shelf that runs between the two to join them. Well, that just creates a trap for egg and flour and bits of pastry. And if you don't clean it all out, well, I guess that's a food safety issue, in my opinion anyway. So I thought, well, I could redesign this a lot better and make it nice smooth corners and just run a bead around the inside. Obviously that little step was giving it some structural integrity and stop it from squishing out of shape or twisting. The other thing she wanted was a way of pushing the pastry down flat into the corners of the base so that you get nice little flat bases on the bottom of your pies without tearing or distorting the shape of the pastry. I thought, well, I could make a little pie stamp that would do that. So let's jump over into Fusion and let's see how we can do this using the revolve function. First things first, let's create a new sketch on the front face to keep things in the correct orientation and we're going to select that pane. We're not going to create a component because this is only going to have one component. Construction line from that center axis. Uh, we're going to make this 47.5 because we're working in half. So that's going to make it 95 mil for the uh, pastry lid. We're going to create another construction line. We're going to make that 30 mil up and look at that. It is perfect. And then we're going to make another one here going 5 mil out because the pastry base is going to be 105 mil. Uh, from there, we're going to get rid of that construction line. Let's make some real lines. Fit to point spline. We're going to click on this bottom section here. Let's bring that up. Let's find the midpoint on this line. There it is. And we're going to find about the halfway mark. Really eyeballing this one. Not going to constrain this too much. Keep things nice and simple. Um, let's press escape so we can select these anchor points and we're just going to drag this one out so it's uh, got us a little bit of a flat spot there. Don't want it to bow out but we do want it to uh, work with me here, come on, zoom in a little bit, that's better. And bottom one, do the same, but this one's a bit more forgiving, it is perfect. All right, and now what we're going to do is we're going to create a copy of that. So control C, control V, we're going to move that over 1.6 mil. It's going to give us the wall and then we're also going to drop it down just a tad, just so that it's not as thin here in the center section. And probably could have done that in the one movement, but uh, just eyeballing that. That looks good to me, half a mil. Didn't need much. Now we're gonna give it some strength here in the center. So I'm gonna create a circle here. And we're gonna go, let's go four mil. Doesn't need to be huge. Just needs to add a little bit of extra strength in the middle here. Stop it from flexing. Now we're gonna print upside down. So up here is gonna be the base that's gonna start printing from. It's gonna print down and it's gonna to get to here. Now that's far too much overhang. Most 3D printers work on about a 45 degree uh, step out so printing out to here the material is just going to fall off basically it's not going to not going to hang on to anything so uh, let's create a arc we'll go for a three point arc why not and we're just going to select that line and then we're going to bring that up to say here and we're just going to bow that in 
nice um, so when we trim it we'll just make sure that we trim this little line out here because it's bowed a little bit too far in but that looks good to me that's going to step out nicely and just for aesthetics let's do the same at the top here it's not as important here but let's make so there's no ugly little corners here that might uh, create dirt collection area so three point arc and same again we're just going to select across and just like that perfect um, before we can go and trim all the fat we just need to go and create a couple of lines here just to uh, close this one off so uh, we're going to select there to there that looks good to me and at the top let's close this off we're going to have to do two lines here one to get us up to that height and another one to go across and close that off perfect T is our shortcut for trim. Let's go down here. We're going to trim those lines out that we don't need. And this one, and let's make sure we get this little one here on the inside. That looks brilliant. A little bit of extra strength just to stop the flex and trim that line off down the bottom. All right, and that's our sketch done. So we can finish that. And what we can do now is revolve. We're going to select that body. Uh, it's not actually a body yet. We're going to select axis and we're going to select the center axis. Very important we do that. And there it is. It's that simple. It's created a nice round shape using the uh, simple little sketch we've made. So we've made one sketch and one revolve, which is essentially is a bit like an extrude. And you can see from the top side here, that's our nice little lip. So the print's going to come down along here and it's going to slowly step out to get to that, that width. Uh, that's that one finished. Let's create a sketch for our pie stamp uh, front face and select that pane. So two construction lines. First one out, we want this 55 mil. So we're going to go 27.5 and another line up is 10 mil to give it some height. 10 and just make sure that stayed at 90. Perfect. Uh, let's get rid of that construction line. Let's go and fit the point spline. Let's zoom in so we can see what we're doing here. And we're just going to bring that out one end to the other here. Nice and neat. And let's bring that line down. Just going to make that nice and smooth, sort of flat in the center and then slowly curve up. And that looks good to me. Let's go and create a copy of that. Control C, Control V, and let's move that up 1.6. Let's go and create the outer wall of it here. Let's go up, and it doesn't need to be huge. This only can be 10 mil. That's plenty. Probably more than enough, but that works for me. And let's go and create a line 1.6 in. 1.6. And let's create another line back down so we can close that wall off. And next we're gonna go and make our handle. So we'll zoom out, line up, and we're gonna make that 70 mil. Line across, we're gonna make that a 10 mil wide handle, so five mil there. And another line from there. Right down, and let's make that 90 degrees because for some reason that wants to step out on us. Good. Now we could finish there. However, let's make this a little more ergodynamic. Um, let's go and create some circles, 20 mil. And eyeball this, that looks good to me. Another circle, 20 mil. Oop. 20 mil. Just bring that down a little. And another circle. This one can be a little bit smaller because this one's going to be for the pinky. Make that 18. And perfect. Now we can go and trim the fat. So press T to select a trim. Let's get rid of all these outside circles here we no longer need. You can't have any excessive lines when you're going to uh, use the, uh, the revolve function in Fusion 360. So we'll just get rid of all those extra lines. And same again down here. Let's get rid of that one. And let's get rid of that one. Perfect. Let's finish that sketch and let's hit the revolve button, see what happens. 
already selected that because it's the only thing we've got in our screen. So we're just going to select the center axis and there we go. We have one pie stamp. Now you could tailor this a little more, be a little bit more clever if you want. Uh, get your vernier calipers out and you can go and measure your partner's fingers. So pinky, ring and middle finger. And for those of you who are still single uh, or not married, I should say, uh, you'd be a little bit creative there if you weren't paying attention. Measure her ring finger and then you have some dimensions. You're welcome. So let's jump over to the 3D printer and see how these look. I like to call conclusion time. This is where we have a look at the designs we've just made and see where we went right and where we went wrong. So let's start with the pastry cutter. This one came out exactly as I planned. A nice smooth transition between the large side and the small side. The lip on the inside, nowhere there for food to hide. It's gonna be nice and easy to wipe that clean and keep this one nice and tidy. Um, the lip on the inside is also doing its job, so it's got plenty of strength. You're not gonna accidentally squish it out of shape. You're not gonna warp it. And also we got the angle just right on that lip so that when it printed from the large side up, uh, it was able to step out nice and neatly so we didn't need any supports on that one. Always my biggest aim is to try and avoid supports where you can. But don't be afraid of using supports. Supports have their place. But if you can, it's less cleanup, less filament you're wasting, and it's a faster print job. On that note, the pie stamp. Now, because we put a concave edge on this one, it made it uh, a little bit more difficult. So we did it like that so we could roll it around in the base of the pie cooker. Um, however, it needed supports. I was hoping it was gonna step each layer out and they were gonna hang on. Unfortunately, what it did is it went out to the furthest point on each layer and started out there printing and worked its way in. Of course, that layer had nothing to sit on, so it just fell down to the bed and made a mess. Supports were required for this one. The downside to that is there's not a lot of space between the high end and the low end in the center. So we had to go around the outside with uh, some sharp side cutters and just snip away at the uh, support until there was enough gap there that we could peel that off. From there, I got some 120 sandpaper, ground it down so it was nice and smooth, got some uh, 400 and then 600 wet and dry and just made that nice and shiny so it wouldn't hide any food in there. But otherwise, this worked great. The hand grip worked fine. Everything else worked great. It's gonna do its job. So I hope on that, guys, you've learned something about the extrude function in Fusion 360. It's very powerful. Uh, to make anything round, you need minimal design and just hit that extrude button. Uh, you, know, you could make all sorts, bowls, cups, jars, uh, vases, spinning tops, you name it. If it's round and you can think of it, you can make it in Fusion 360. On that, I'd love to hear from you guys. Leave some comments down below on things you want to see me make. I'm happy to do a tutorial or happy to try and simplify a design you've got that maybe not, might not be working for you. But all in all, I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. I hope you're inspired to go and make something with your 3D printer. If you have liked this, please hit subscribe, hit the like button, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.